minus eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Forty seconds, a little over forty seconds into the flight, we are seeing thirty-three out of thirty-three Raptor engines ignited. Boosters pushing us downrange over the Gulf. Next milestone coming up in just under ten seconds is going to be Max Q, that max aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. All right, so we're through Max Q. That's the the heaviest stresses it's kind of seeing on the way up. Wow, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm still recovering. <laughs> that was amazing. Beautiful views of the vehicle on ascent, pitching downrange away from the launch tower. Next thing coming up is hot staging. So we're going to look for six engines to ignite on ship while we're still attached to the top of the booster. We'll see all but those three center engines shut down on booster. We're hearing the initial call that we are go for booster catch back here at the launch tower. Coming up now on hot staging, the ship's engines will ignite while still attached to the Super Heavy booster, and also while Super Heavy booster will still be under power itself. The clamps holding the two stages together are going to release, and Starship second stage engines will Booster engine cut off. Ship engine start up. Stage separation. Boost back burn start up. There we go. Ship engines, all six Raptors ignited. We're doing that boost back burn. Looks like we got 11 of the 13 that we command for Cold that. So return. that's going to start sending. The booster back. We are still go for booster return, even with two Raptors out during that boost back. We can do a full duration one. But looks like we got a ship, six engines heading into space, and then we got a booster hopefully on our way back to Starbase. How's everything going in Hawthorne, Chris? Everything is looking good. The crowd eagerly followed that ascent and now watching the booster coming back. So as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen here, that is ship, ship continuing. And uh, that's a great view of ship continuing on its way to space. They're looking, that's inside the camera, inside the aft skirt, looking at the Raptor vacuum and the sea level engines, the sea level ones there in the center of your screen under our T plus clock. You can see our boost back burn. We're down to three engines on the boost back burn. Uh, and you can see ship on the right-hand side of that telemetry with six engines lit, continuing its ascent to orbit already over 100 kilometers in altitude. The booster 87 kilometers in altitude and continuing its trek right now back to the landing site and catch site. There's boost a back shutdown. And we just heard a good call out for boost back shutdown. The next thing we should see on our screen is the separation of the hot stage from the super heavy booster. We jettison that because we do not need it for the landing, uh, but on future iterations of the super heavy, that uh, hot stage ring will be incorporated into the booster and we will get it back. But for today, you can see it on the right-hand side of your screen there, just separating off of from the right-hand side of the booster. You can also see the booster doing its liquid oxygen dump there, which is exactly what we would expect for it to do as the booster gets itself configured for the landing here. 
Now, meanwhile, Starship will continue to coast after it reaches orbit for about 40 minutes or so up to an altitude of 214 kilometers, but it's still got a ways to go there, currently accelerating past 7,500 kilometers per, per hour there in velocity. And just look at those great views of the booster coming back. The, the, the Gulf coastline there just looks absolutely gorgeous. Starship is on a nominal trajectory. And there we hear nominal trajectories all around. And uh, Dan and Kate, we're at five minutes, uh, 15 seconds here uh, into the flight. Everything looking good for the Super Heavy and for Starship today. Uh, what's it like there at Starbase as we get ready to catch? The Go. It was incredible, Chris, yeah. to be able to see the mock diamonds with my own eyes. That was amazing. Uh, we are standing by for return of booster back to the launch tower. We have heard that we are go for the uh, the catch of the booster. Yeah, this coming from one of our long range tracking cameras, we're able to see the hot stage separate and fly away. So coming up in just about 30 seconds, we're going to look for the landing burn. We're going to command those 13 inner and middle ring engines to turn on. 13 initially, they bleed off all of that velocity as we're slowing down from supersonic speeds, eventually moting down to only three engines for that precision flight into the tower. Right now, Booster using its four hypersonic grid fins to help guide itself through this atmospheric entry back for its precision, precision landing at the launch site. Once again, we're going to ignite first the Center 13 engines. We should see that coming up here momentarily. Engines and startup. This is going to come down to three engines as the Booster slows down for its landing. And we just heard the sonic boom. What an incredible sight to see the super heavy booster gliding down booster into the chopstick down. arms once again. Thank you very much, Captain Booster. Booster is Stuck the landing. Wow. That will never get old. All right. We saw 12 out of 13 light for that landing burn. Booster is still able to make its way with that final precision burn on the three engines in for the tower catch. So booster caught. Meanwhile, keeping an eye on ship. We've still got six Raptors burning. Those are going to continue for about another minute um, until we'll get to uh, the Starship engine cutoff. Really cool view. Again, a million shout outs to all of our avionics team who make these cameras possible for us. That's looking uh, right down inside essentially the skirt area of ship where you can see a pretty good view of all six Raptors, especially those three inner ones, one of which we're going to hopefully relight a little bit later. And we just saw some engines go out. It looks like we are losing attitude control of the ship. Ship FTS is saved. So we're still getting video down from the ship. You can see we've lost several engines and we've lost attitude control of the vehicle. So we'll continue to stick with it. For those of you that have 
For those of you that just uh, recently joined us, we had uh, a successful liftoff of the eighth test flight of Starship, followed by a successful a successful stage separation. We saw the booster, actually, you can see it just behind us here. Uh, the booster had a successful catch back at the tower. Um, unfortunately, it seems as though we lost the, uh, uh, the attitude control of the ship. We are standing by as we listen in with the teams on the nets to understand uh, what information we're able to provide you. We will provide that as soon as we are able, um, but it's pretty incredible to take a moment and see <laughs> the booster just behind us. Certainly yeah. a different view than last time. And at this point, we've essentially lost contact with the ship. We're no longer receiving telemetry at this moment. So we were only about 20 seconds away or so from the end of that ship ascent burn. We saw several of the engines start to cut out. Uh, once you lose enough of those center engines, you're going to lose attitude control. And so we did see the ship start to go into a spin. And at this point, we have lost contact with the ship. So uh, we're going to listen in for a little bit. Just I think it's pretty obvious we're not going to continue the rest of the mission today. But uh, just give us a couple more minutes. We'll bring you more information as it comes in. All right, so coming back with you real quick. So can confirm we did lose contact with the ship. Um, unfortunately, this happened last time too, so we've got some practice at this. Now we've got a lot of measures in place, like debris response areas where we coordinate very closely with air traffic control. We have a lot of measures put before we ever launch a rocket to make sure that we're keeping the public safe. Those worked last time and they're actively in work right now. So just to recap real quick, everything we saw, we lifted off right at the top of our window, essentially at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Booster was able to get us all the way up into space, made its way back here. It's sitting on the tower right behind us, our third ever catch. 
Starship ignited all six of its Raptor engines. It was just about 20 or 30 seconds away. We'll get exact times from the end of its ascent burn when we started to see some engines go out on ship, eventually lost attitude control, and then lost contact with the ship shortly after. So obviously a lot to go through, a lot to dig through. We're going to go right at it. The primary reason we do these flight tests is to learn. We have some more to learn about this vehicle, but we're going to be right back here in the not too distant future and we're going to get a ship to space. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We fly to learn and we're learning a lot. And as is the case with developmental programs such as the Starship program, progress isn't always linear. So at this point, we're going to close out our webcast for the day. But before we do, we'd like to give a shout out to our viewers, of course, as well as our partners, uh, both here in Cameron, excuse me, here in Cameron County and around the world. Now, once we know more about the um, mission today, we'll provide you with updates on SpaceX.com as well as at SpaceX on X. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.